morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I was a bit concerned that actually we sponsored the uh, evening networking drinks last night, so that was in danger of ruining the audience this morning, but uh, it's good to see so many people here. Um, as we've heard yesterday uh, and from Daniel there, we believe uh, it's, it's key to have a customer-focused business going forward in the, in the TV, connected TV world. And uh, I want to share with you why, why we think that, and, and again, building on Daniel's um, talk on, on how you can uh, build those capabilities. Uh, very quickly, just so you know why we care about this, uh, I was asked quite a lot um, yesterday about who NTT data are and NTT, so just this one slide to set the context. We're, we come from Japan, uh, headquartered there. Um, we're a very large player in the telco media landscape. Uh, NTT Docomo uh, is our mobile operator out of Japan, uh, but we also have several other comms businesses, uh, and I work for NTT Data, which is our systems integration and consulting business uh, within that. So what's happening in the industry? Um, I think most of you will be fully aware of this. You know, the obvious one is the proliferation of, uh, of the platforms and devices that uh, video content is now consumed on. Um, the new entrants, uh, I'll, I'll add the G to your fan, Daniel. Um, I think it sounds slightly more scarier if it's the fangs that are, that are coming after the, uh, the video industry. Uh, I think we're all aware of the impact they've had, the, the growth of, uh, of those uh, businesses uh, over the last five years is, is astounding. Um, the one I'm not sure people are fully got their heads around yet is the changing consumer expectations in an omni-channel service uh, perspective. Um, the, uh, I think you used to being compared against these guys across the bottom, what they offer, but actually because the content is being consumed on, on devices, tablets, mobiles, you're also being compared against the best in breed digital offers on those devices. That may be an insurance company, it may be a retailer, maybe just a, a social media company that hasn't, hasn't got into, into TV yet. Um, but the, the customer experience is all on that device, so you, you have to fight for the consumer's attention. If, if they don't like your app, they'll be going to another app on that device. So, so the, the, there's a whole new set of benchmarks of customer experience that, that you're having to, uh, to be measured against. So, so we think of some key principles in, in developing this kind of customer-focused approach and, uh, and, and, and delivering that, being, being customer-centric. The, the obvious one is to focus on the customer. And, and I just caveat now, my, my assumption is we're all, uh, the people in this room are on top of the fact you need compelling content. That's what we've always been good at, and you will still need to be good at doing that. You've, you've got to have the compelling content. But now it's about adding the extra layer of differentiation and, and competitive advantage. So, so that's about bringing the same care and attention to content to the customer, to the end consumer. Then it's about understanding what their needs are and being able to react to their needs in a timely manner and at pace. And that's where the agility comes in. Um, we can, it's going to be impossible to predict in detail what, what the customer expectations, the consumer needs are going forward. So, so you've got to be equipped to respond at pace to their needs. And not just in pockets, but across your organization. So at scale as well across your organization. I'm not, I'm not going to drain this, but I, I think the three big areas for, for me on this in the, in the center there, it's, it's having somebody that owns a customer experience vision. Um, we heard yesterday morning, I think, so, some very interesting different approaches to, to, to our business. And um, the, at one side, there was the Paramount Plus uh, offering, which was a, a very much a, uh, a partner approach. We're providing content to operators. So our, our customers are going to be the operators. We're, we're less worried about the end consumer. At the other end of the scale, you've got, got Nick Hearn from Sky who quite clearly want, you know, they, they were getting into the technology, the devices, as well as um, the, the customer experience on the platform. 
So, so they really wanted to fully own the end consumer experience. And, and it's, it's having some clarity around that vision. It's then being able to uh, enable your business from a technology perspective. Uh, ben mentioned yesterday about the, the need for uh, being on top of your data uh, and how important that is. And also having the right customer platforms to access, to allow your customers to access the information and the services they need. And then on the other side, it's equipping the people and the processes in your business. And again, it's what Daniel was talking about, the culture change and having the right mindset to be agile. <coughs> so how do you build that agility? I think the most important one is the top right there. It comes from the leadership. You, ha you have to have that com commitment from the top down uh, in terms of um, deciding that what your customer strategy is, what your customer focus is. I mean, I was really interested last week, the BBC announced for the first time they're having a chief customer officer. And, and I thought that was a really interesting move by the BBC. Um, you know, they've always talked about audience and viewers. They now have a chief customer officer who, who they've recruited out of Virgin Media, actually. So um, I, I think, you know, we're, we're seeing a, a real shift in, in the focus on leadership around the customer. Um, I think the rest of it can all be implemented then about measure, the right measurements. It's, you know, the, the right uh, KPIs in, a, in an agile way. Um, having understanding where your teams need to be to work together. They can still be distributed, but you have to make some conscious decisions about that, how they are distributed. And the cross-domain planning, it's breaking down those silos again, not being that bureaucratic organization that Daniel talked about. It's being able to work across those, have product owners, and, and it's that when we talk about optimizing the system for flow, it's, it's being able to, to flow right through your organization based around a product mentality. What, what are we taking to market for our customers? So finally, so that we can, uh, we can move on to the panel, I just want to share some of the lessons learned from the experience we've had with clients in taking this. And, and these clients aren't just in the media space. We've, we've worked with telcos. We've worked with financial services companies uh, moving this forward. You will come across these challenges. The domain silos are there. Um, you will find that finance, uh, there's a mentality around finance about it approving big budgets, want big budgets, sorry, wanting to look forward sort of a year or two and, uh, and make major commitments. And there'll be a, a rush in this bottom corner to, to start putting new features out there, try and, try and keep up with the Joneses. And, and, that, and, and that actually, if you, if you rush too quickly ahead, that can damage your platform, that damage your overall offering. So some of this, I guess, is fairly obvious, but Again, it's having that leadership mindset that understands that they need to tackle these approaches. That agile isn't about throwing groups of people in for a short time and getting them out again. That, that team stability, having long-standing feature teams that understand the platform and can understand the business and, and can understand what you're trying to offer to the customer is key. Um, bringing supply and demand together. Again, that's about breaking down those silos. I, I work with an information services company who, you know, have been, their, their product's been digital for many, many years, and you think they would have a digital mindset. But, but actually, the supply and demand side of their business was very separate. There was a whole group around actually what the product was, but that they were entirely separate to the guys that ran the customer systems and had to deliver to those products. So, so they're going through a transformation right now to break that down and having a whole f supply and demand team that, that works in a horizontal fashion. So that's our thoughts on, uh, on how you can get to that customer-focused organization. <laughs>